It's the Friday before Christmas. I'm undertaking a very special expedition today, exploring some of the ancient rites of way that leads to the Thames and down onto the foreshore. I hope I've got my timings right. Low tide was at 10.50 today. It's now about 20 past 11. We're walking down Wapping High Street and I hope that we're gonna get down onto the foreshore down some of the old Thames stairs. We'll come back for that one. We will stick to the order. That's King Henry stairs. Looks like I may have gauged it just about right. The tide's starting to come back in, but I should be able to get down there. So today's walk is partly inspired by this book, London Walks, which was actually sent to me by Susan Barnett in 2010, so 10 years ago. I think Tom Pocock was a journalist, and he was writing about this area just before it underwent its transition into what it is today, which is essentially a residential zone. The docks had only just recently started to close. It was still in operation though. There were still some sail barges working out of the docks along Wapping. St. Catherine's Dock down by Tower Bridge had already been uh, converted and redeveloped and it just opened. And Pocock predicted that the views east from St. Catherine's Dock along the Thames at Wapping and Limehouse would become famous all around the world. He talks about this area as once having been the heart of British trade. International trade coming in to this area where the, the air was thick with the smell of spices from the east. It's uh, magnificent, isn't it? Now, I've been walking quickly along Wapping High Street because I want to get here before the tide comes in too far. It's the historic town of Ramsgate Pub. I'm running beside it on the Wapping Old Stairs that lead down to the Thames. So let's see if we can get onto the Thames foreshore. So these are the old Waterman's Stairs, the old Thames Waterman's access to the, to the foreshore where they would get into their rowing boats and they would row people across the Thames. They're actually very steep and slippery from where the, you can see where the Thames washes up over these stairs and makes them incredibly slippery. And these stairs here, I think of the old stone stairs, the original whopping old stairs. I first came down here about six years ago, seven years ago, after seeing some fantastic photographs of these old stairs, the whopping old stairs in uh, wonderful London, published in the mid-1920s. So I came down to, to take photographs of them then and put a post up on my blog, The Lost Byway. I think a murky grey day is the perfect weather in which to enjoy this view of the Thames. Come down here on the foreshore and imagine the watermen taking their boats out there, ferrying people across to the other side of the river. I was really fortunate uh, about 10 years ago to spend a couple of days on the Thames here with some Thames watermen. And it's, uh, they claim it's one of the, the most ancient guilds, the most ancient London guilds, because they were such a vital part of the infrastructure of London. As I remember, for a very long time, you only had London Bridge. So if you wanted to get across the river, you had to go by boat. And the Thames watermen completely controlled that traffic. And this particular family, they said that they'd been watermen going back to the 1500s, which is incredible, and, and had been passed down from father to son. And I think at the time, the context of us making the, the program was, is that, well, actually, look, you can see why. As, as I'm talking, there's a, an Uber boat going past. And of course, that was something that was uh, opened up under, I think it was under EU legislation, oddly enough to mean that anybody with a pilot's license could operate a boat on the Thames. Before that, you had to be a member of the guilds of Thames watermen. And the apprenticeship apparently took a very long time. I can't remember how long it took, but it was a long time. One of the reasons is because the tides of the Thames are so strong, stronger than many other rivers. And pilots and sea captains were coming 
that operated passenger boats on um, other rivers in Europe and they were coming onto the Thames and they were running into all sorts of difficulties because they underestimated the strength of the tides. You get, you get quite a few people come down here mudlarking, looking for treasure in the Thames mud. It is actually uh, controlled by licence. I think you actually have to have a licence to properly mudlark down here. But I don't think anyone would object to you picking up a bit of clay pipe. The other thing this particular stretch of the Thames is known for is it was once called Execution Dock. It's where the, the pirates and the mutineers would be brought and they would be hung from a gibbet down here on the foreshore and chained up until three tides had washed over their bodies. This is where the notorious Captain Kidd was executed. And I was reading an account in a wonderful book called The Law the law and lure of London's river, quite difficult to say. It's written by a guy who obviously worked, I think, for the Port of London Authority and had an office down here. And one of the workmen brought in some chains that seemed unusual, not like these chains. But they had a series of padlocks on these chains and he didn't know what they were, so they handed them over to the Museum of London. And it turned out they were the chains that were used to chain the hands of the prisoners tied to the post here whilst the tides had washed over their body. Quite a grim find. So when Tom Pocock came down here in 1974, he describes a skyline from here still matted with masts of the, of the ships and the sail barges, which is interesting, isn't it? Within a few years that had gone completely. This spot here at Oliver's Wharf is usually a good place to find a clay pipe or two. I've got some at home actually, I could show you if I don't find any. If you're interested in mudlarking, there are a few YouTube channels uh, that are run by mudlarkers and they come down here and they show you what they find. It's kind of like a treasure hunting thing. I think there was also a TV show with Johnny Vaughan about mudlarking as well. So mudlarking's kind of gone mainstream. This is a pretty shell. I came down to this spot with the, with the great London writer Ian Sinclair when we were making our London Overground film because of course now the Overground Railway comes down to Wapping and then it goes, I think it goes through Brunel's Tunnel this Victorian marvel of engineering where he built a tunnel beneath the Thames not without difficulties, I think it collapsed at one point even so, they did manage to achieve it and we still use it today as far as I'm aware, I'm sure someone will correct me if that's wrong but Ian wrote a kind of very prophetic novel about the development of the old docks called Down River. And in that story, one of the, the developers of this area here around Wapping, a narrow street developer, tries to uh, commit suicide by tying himself to a post and letting the tides wash over him. And as they start to do so, he, uh, he regrets his actions. I'm not sure what the outcome of that is. I think he, I think he survives. I think someone rescues him. I will say, if you see this video and you think it would be great to come down here and walk along the Thames foreshore, please take care and study the tide times because 
the Thames tide is a very strong current in the Thames. It's a very strong current, it's a very strong tide. And it can come in quite quickly. You come down here and you think, oh, I know, I'll walk down there to Tower Bridge. And you do it at the wrong time of the day, you might find yourself getting cut off by the tide, which is not a situation you want to be in. So if you do decide to come down here, maybe do a bit of unofficial mudlarking or whatever it is, please take care. Back up the slippery steps to the town of Ramsgate pub, which is a pub full of stories. Aren't all pubs, I guess? So this is a very historic pub, the town of Ramsgate. There's been a pub on this site since at least the 1530s, but it isn't even the oldest pub along Wapping High Street. The name is said to come from the fact that the, uh, the fishermen from Ramsgate would unload their catches by uh, the Wapping Old Stairs to avoid having to pay kind of a duty or a tax if they brought it into Billingsgate. And it's where the notorious hanging judge, Judge Jeffries, was recognised by some drinkers and he was captured outside this pub. So we're gonna walk east along Wapping High Street and pick up the sights along the way. I feel like we should acknowledge this park here, but I, I filmed in here with the great Ian Sinclair who had written about this particular location in Down River and in a number of other books, I believe. So I perhaps will insert that bit of footage here, but I've used it a few times. Yeah, that, that must be St John's, yeah. And this is where there they were these monkeys uh, they were, um, were running about in the trees. The marmosets have gone. A graveyard detached from its host, a church tower faking a period grandeur with its body tumbles wantonly into decay behind the cor corrugated iron fencing. From the low steps of St John's, Scandrit Street, I mourn the loss of another secret locale, a Temenos remaining sacred because we do not need to visit it. It's there and that's enough. The balance in our psychic map of the city is unharmed. But now another disregarded inscape has been noticed and dragged from cyclical time to pragmatic time and has been asked to justify itself. And this is the tidied up result of what was happening when I came here in uh, 1987, 1988. This, this wilderness is now this um, ghost of a graveyard opposite the restored church. What I'll do is I'll link below to um, not only London Overground, but I walked through this area with Ian Sinclair um, for a walk that we did actually at the beginning of this year. I think it was in February this year. It was a fascinating walk. We went from the city of London and then we ended over at Stepney and we walked through this park again where we had been a few years previously. I'll just pick up one thing though. It's an old churchyard, by the way. So I will link to that video below rather than keep reposting the same bit of video. I hope you understand. But one thing I will repeat is there's a special plaque up here which when I came with Ian in 2015 or 2016, the first time, he wasn't aware of. I think it had been put up since he had uh, first written about it, so it's an interesting spot. Marks the burial place of the leveller, Thomas Rainsborough, who was buried in this churchyard on the 14th of November 1648. And this plaque was put up in 2013. You can see that someone's put a poppy there for Remembrance Day, because obviously he was a soldier. What's, what's fascinating is that um, in the days when these docks were very busy and very active, there's a lot of the local people, their pets, <laughs> were things like uh, parrots and cockatoos and monkeys. And Ian writes about the monkeys leaping around in the trees in this churchyard. And I don't know if that's something he saw when he used to work down here in the 70s or whether that's something he imagined, but it's probably something that would have happened. So also in that video with Ian Sinclair, the early part of this year, and actually in 2016, we went to uh, Turner's Old Star. Yes, the great painter, J.M.W. Turner, actually had a pub down here in Wapping. 
where he had this whole alternative life. He had his mistress there, or his other wife, his second wife, if you like, installed as the landlady in the pub. He had children with her there, and he used to shuttle between there, and I think his other place was further west. And he used to come down here and paint the skies. I think he would place them in other paintings of other parts of the world, or other parts of the country, because he loved the light over the Thames, the special, magical Thames light. Um, also, Francis Bacon had a studio here, we had a flat here in the 70s and 80s. I'm not sure if his motivations for coming down here were the same as Turner's though, but again, Ian talks about that in the video. Various wharfs along here. We had Oliver's Wharf down there by the Wapping Old Stairs, and here we have Aberdeen Wharf. And then just along there we have St John's Wharf. And here we have the, the Marine Policing Unit. And uh, I believe this claims to be the, the oldest branch of the police force. I could be wrong about that, but there's a plaque on the wall. We should go and have a look at it. There you go. It was founded in uh, 1798. For over 200 years the police have patrolled the River Thames from this site. I mean, you can imagine, can't you, in the in the heyday of the, this part of the Thames as a trading port. <laughs> a lot of stuff used to probably go astray, didn't it? <laughs> here we have the Captain Kidd pub. It's here in, uh, in memory of the, the famous sea captain who was hung down on the shore. Was he a pirate, Captain Kidd? I don't know. Of course, London now is in tier three restrictions, which means that uh, all the pubs are shut. Obviously, otherwise I'd be duty-bound to go and show you the interior of these beautiful historic pubs. Here we have another set of historic Thames stairs, King Henry stairs. What's going to happen as we walk along Wapping High Street is that the tide is going to start to come in so I wonder at what point we won't get access to the foreshore but we can still get down there now still pretty low tide. That was a nervy moment as I approached the stairs thinking well these are steep actually look they've gone they've been eroded away they were obviously wooden and now replaced with this old metal ladder. I hope you'll forgive me for not clambering up and down that rickety old ladder we get a good view of Wapping Pier from here though. Can actually come out here a little bit onto Wapping Pier. I don't know how far you can get. See the towers of Canary Wharf around the bend of the Thames where it takes a sharp bend. So the name Wapping was originally believed to derive from um, an encampment of a person called Whopper. Whopper's encampment and I think it's uh, said that Whopper was an Anglo-Saxon. Whether that's true or not I don't know. And actually when I did the walk with Tom Bolton along the Black Ditch, which comes out a little bit further down at Lime Kiln Wharf. Some people reckon that Whopper had used the Black Ditch to bring his boats inland. It's an interesting idea. Apparently now they don't think that was very likely because this would have all been very, very marshy. And um, it's more likely to derive from an old word for, um, for a marsh, a Wapple, W-A-P-O-L. I prefer Whopper's encampment. <laughs> Stepney is Stibber's land. Bethnal Green is Builder's something. <laughs> we had the same thing in Hackney, didn't we? Hackney is um, Hacker's Island. And what else do we have? We have uh, Homerton was a lady's farmstead. And Bermondsey was Burma's, Bermuds, Bermuds E, Bermuds Island. I like the consistency of it like that. I love the idea as well of all these people with their little places around this marshy Thames. 
So we can actually turn off Walking High Street onto the Thames path here through this modern uh, development of flats. Take away decaf, flat white, and a plain croissant to keep me going. It's good to support little local businesses. It's actually quite expensive. It was over five quid for those two. But, you know, they're struggling at the moment, these businesses, so they need all the money they can get. Development of, uh, of Wapping made it a very kind of contested zone. People of a certain vintage will remember when Rupert Murdoch moved his newspapers down to Wapping in the 80s, which triggered what was known as the Battle of Wapping to protect the old print trade and the newspaper trade. When I came here in the late 80s as a student to study up at City Poly, where we saw it the week down by Tower Bridge and up on uh, Whitechapel High Street, Oldgate. These flats that they built were empty. There'd been a big recession at the end of the 80s and these places were overpriced. The people that had bought them couldn't find tenants for them or they couldn't sell them. There was a lot of negative equity around. So they were renting them out to students for, well, very cheaply. And I remember walking around these streets and they were deserted at night. There were no lights on, all the apartments were dark and there was nobody around. You see the odd light. It was a very strange landscape. Another set of the old stone stairs down to the Thames foreshore. I think we're obliged to go down, aren't we? Very wet and slippery. Down here we even have a, a sandy beach. some of you watching will remember what it was like down here when it was a busy port. This would have been a hive of activity. The water here would have been thick with barges and lightermen jumping around between them and cranes swinging over and hoisting off goods. I think I've mentioned before my, uh, my dad used to come down here in the 50s to collect uh, laminate for use in the furniture industry in Wickham. He talks about the way that the lorries would queue up and where you maybe have to, you know, be nice to the guys that would give you access to the dock so you could get ahead in the queue <laughs> to get loaded up so you could get back on the road again. Entirely sure, but I think this stuff here is recycling. It's going to a, a centre down near uh, Battersea, I think. Could be completely wrong about that, but there's a big uh, landing stage where they unload these. Haven't got a lot of shoreline to work with here, so I better get going before the wash from that boat <laughs> comes over my feet. Wait, by the time I get to the steps, that'll be lapping up here. Our walk continues eastward along Wapping Wall. So the prospect of Whitby here claims to be the oldest Thameside pub still in existence. It dates from 1520. I think that claim is disputed, but you know. You come and tell the landlord of the prospects of Whitby that. And beside the prospect of Whitby, we have another set of Thames Waterman stairs, the Pelican stairs. And these are actually uh, 
These are actually some wooden stairs we've got to go down here. A bit of macabre decoration here. A noose outside the prospect of Whitby in honour of uh, the hanging Judge Jeffries who used to drink here. Look at this great little sandy beach here, a little sandy cove. Bet people enjoy coming down here in the summer at low tide, making sand castles. Although it's not advised to go for a dip in the Thames. What's interesting is although the maritime trade has stopped down here, it's still got that kind of maritime feel to it, hasn't it? Even if it's just the echoes of the names of Whitby and Ramsgate, of coastal resorts, of old fishing ports, something of the old seafaring spirit that is trapped within the, uh, the place here, encoded in the gravels on this shoreline, embedded in the old timbers of the wharfs, it still is present here. It's amazing when you think famous explorers such as Martin Frobisher boarded a little rowing boat to row out to a ship in search of the Northwest Passage. It's also where Captain Bly set off on his ill-fated journey on the Bounty. Many an epic journey started down here on this shore. People rowing out in a little boat sometimes never to return. Test a bit of the old dock infrastructure here at Shadwell Basin. So I think we'll just to end this walk, this whopping walkabout, the walk around the Shadwell Basin. It's fantastic that this Wonderful space has been preserved, isn't it? As open water. It's fantastic. It was built in the 1830s when the, when the docks were expanding as they were getting ever busier. A lot of the old docks have been filled in to be built upon, but this one's been kept as a kind of leisure space. There's canoeing here in a fishing club. They've built housing around the outside. It's a really wonderful bit of open space in the East End. Well, I hope you enjoyed that whopping walkabout and the exploration of the ancient rites of way of the Thames watermen and all that that brings with it, all those wonderful stories along just that one straight whopping high street and whopping wall. I just want to say actually now, this would be the last video before Christmas, so a very Merry Christmas to you or wherever it is that you celebrate during this midwinter feasting season. I hope you managed to have a, a great season, however you celebrate it and whatever circumstances you're celebrating it in. I'm gonna try and enjoy it as much as possible. But, however, I'm not done with 2020 yet. There's still gonna be at least another one more video to come before the end of the year. So as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be.